how does it help egg quality? Well, the truth is there's actually no specific research that says acupuncture helps egg quality. That said, we can surmise, and I've witnessed it and perhaps you've witnessed it, that it has had something to do with it because, you know, why is it that, you know, you'll have a person that has done three IVF cycles, they add acupuncture for three months, and then all of a sudden things look very different. I was so super excited that Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is a neurobiologist out of Stanford, he's a professor and he's part of the medical school. And this is what he said. And I wanted to share this with everyone. Acupuncture increases likelihood of pregnancy. That's an accurate statement for which there is now increasing amounts of mechanistic data. So he did a YouTube video and it got a lot of views and I had to listen to it. And I loved what he said. Do you want to sum it up a bit? And then we're going to actually go through how it, how acupuncture actually helps with pregnancy, trying to conceive whether you're doing it naturally or through like IVF processes. Yeah, the summary from what I understood, the way he described it is a lot of, um, or very similar to how we've described it in previous episodes, but he does it so eloquently. Essentially, acupuncture improves, improves fertility in two main ways. So mechanically, so the actual act of using the acupuncture needles into these neural pathways, increasing nerve conduction and therefore circulation to both the testes in men and the ovaries in women, improving circulation and then uh, egg quality, and then chemically increasing, they see that there's increased hormones in cases of low hormones, so improved uh, cell health um, uh, mechanically, but then because of that increased free testosterone and testosterone in men. And then he said, you know, this is a confusing thing to kind of explain, but it balances women's hormones in a way. Cause he's like, yeah, through the menstrual cycle, there's varying hormones. So technically it doesn't balance it. But what, what we've seen is that it can reduce FSH or climbing FSH, which as we know is kind of indicative of uh, signs of uh, one sign of perimenopause or the brain not communicating quite as well with the ovaries. So by reducing the FSH, stage, it means there's better response between um, that connection, like the, the brain's FSH me message mm -hmm. and ovaries. So in, in, in turn, uh, improving egg quality. So mechanically, um, improved nerve conduction pathways, and then hormonally, the, the changes. So, um, and yeah. see it clinically. And right? he also yeah. mentions about, and you know, we say this all the time, it's like, we, we do see that, and clinically speaking, and through research, we see that the blood flow will increase to the tissues and the ovaries, uh, all of the reproductive organs, which can, you know, help the eggs pass through, through the reproductive organs. So thereby helping reproduction. And for the men, again, you know, it's increasing the vascular input to the scrotum and testicles, and it helps to regulate the temperature there because we know the boys are very temperamental. Even by one degree increase of um, temperature and the scrotal temperature, it can impact the sperm. So helping and moderating it and ba balancing it through acupuncture, it really can help the quality and quantity. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about egg quality, uterine lining, pre and post embryo transfer treatments with acupuncture for IVF, and then the male factor in terms of sperm quality. So we're going to kind of break it down so we can share a bit more about, like you already talked about it, like, you know, how does it help egg quality? Well, the truth is there's actually no specific research that says acupuncture helps egg quality. That said, we can surmise, and I've witnessed it, and perhaps you've witnessed it, that it has had something to do with it because, you know, why is it that, you know, you'll have a person that has done three IVF cycles, they add acupuncture for three months, and then all of a sudden things look very different, right? So it, you know, uh, or why was it that a patient of mine, um, she had three back-to-back -back cycles, maybe even four actually, no, three back-to-back -back cycles where they did retrieval, they did do some acupuncture, but 
it was like once a week, maybe that or, or, and she had endometriosis stage four. So she had blood volume issues going to the ovaries. So I told her, I said, you know, listen, we can help it, but I'm not sure if it's enough. And she's like, you know what, Mary, I'm so busy that I, I this is what I can do. I said, fine, let's do it. So we did it. And after the fa- uh, the three embryo retrievals, she collected a whole whack of eggs. Well, actually not a whole whack because she was also considered um, diminished ovarian reserve. So really she got like one, maybe two embryos per IVF retrieval cycle. So she basically batched them and then they she tested them to see if they were chromosomally normal, which is called PGTA testing, okay? And she found that none of them were normal. One of them was considered mosaic, meaning that it could be normal, it may not be normal. So she thought, oh my gosh, I can't go through with this. So maybe what I'll need to do is like the next plan and we're gonna do the get serious plan where we're going to do four retrieval cycles because knowing that I only get one or two embryos, I have to get at least five eggs or five embryos to test so that I can at least have one viable embryo. So I said, fine, if you're going to do that, then let's actually increase the number of acupuncture treatments. Are you willing to do that? So she did. She, we went to two to three times a week because again, don't forget, she actually had impeded blood flow to that to her reproductive organs because of her severe endometriosis. And what transpired was the numbers of eggs retrieved did not go up. It was the same. But when we actually looked at when they tested the embryos after the four rounds of retrievals, having out of um, eight embryos, she had five normal embryos. So that's significant. And I know this is like one case, but that's where change starts. That's where shifts change. And, you know, and testing acupuncture is very difficult in you know, doing it in isolation. So really the the moral of this story is that, you know, doing acupuncture once may not be enough because it's kind of like if you literally plant a seed in the soil, you're not just going to water it once. You're not going to fertilize it once. You have to do it consistently multiple times to help nourish and create that blossoming seed. Dr. Huberman from Huberman Labs that we were briefly uh, mentioning earlier, he talks about studies and how to interpret it right at the end of that YouTube video, which we'll add that link in our notes, our show notes, and how to interpret studies and how to be cautious about interpreting different studies. Because it's easy to just say, okay, you know, I'm going to prove my point and be give a biased study. But what he's saying is that there is really good, better quality studies now showing that acupuncture works, then it is a hard thing to study because it is very individual uh, in terms of treatment plans and diagnoses, which is what the beauty of acupuncture and Chinese medicine itself, because you can go to a, a conventional medical doctor and not know what's going on, but you go to a Chinese medicine doctor and you have better understanding. Uh, so it's important to recognize that A, it's hard to study, but B, the evidence is increasing. So that's exciting. I remember also, this is not a study um, pertaining to egg quality, but reading uh, a study about how there was definitely a before and after improvement in blood flow when doing acupuncture before doing an ultrasound of the uterus and and then after doing an ultrasound of the uterus after acupuncture. Um, so sorry, before and after treatment with acupuncture, examining the blood flow of the uterus. And I'm pretty sure this is studied multiple times, but I remember thinking, okay, when patients are coming in to ask, like, what's the evidence? Well, understanding that mechanically it improves circulation, of course, that's going to be evidence that it would improve uh, egg quality, but not necessarily. And there is no real study to say it improves egg quality because you can't just extract a bunch of eggs after acupuncture and say, look, it improved the quality. You know, you can do a sperm sample and a semen analysis. And we do see that uh, before and after acupuncture that uh, semen analysis improves. So there's bigger uh, volumes and quality, uh, motility, DNA fragmentation. So they're definitely like we can surmise that 
because it improves uh, these parameters in men, if we were able to extract eggs to see the difference that there would be uh, improved egg quality, Mm -hmm. what really shows up as improved egg quality is the pregnancy outcome. So that's what we're seeing in the literature is that there's improved pregnancy outcome. That's what we want to see in live births. So live births is actually the most important one. So who cares about pregnancy if you don't get a live birth, right? Right. And we do see that for sure. So thank you for um, clarifying that as well. And so to add into the egg quality, quality piece, of course, we also look at uterine lining, especially for those women that are actually at the medical clinic. And, you know, when you do an IVF, for example, the standard um, minimum uterine lining um, thickness is like eight millimeter. And some women have a difficulty achieving that. And there's some data saying that when you have it at eight millimeter, it's going to increase the likelihood of implantation and carrying a baby to term. So, you know, this is where in the West they may add progesterone and like some kind of steroid or um, baby aspirins. But in Chinese medicine, we'll use herbal medicine. We'll definitely do the acupuncture. And again, it's about doing it consistently. And the good news is, is that you can do it in conjunction with your treatment. What I like to, um, or what I would like to point out as well, is that although there are studies showing improved pregnancy outcomes, clinically, there's the clinical expert opinion too. So when we're reviewing literature or reviewing outcomes, we're not just looking at studies, we're looking at expert opinions and acupuncture definitely across the board, you know, we see increases in pregnancy outcomes in clinics. So it's unfortunate, but we should really be collaborating with all our colleagues and seeing, okay, like what's the difference and uh, pregnancy outcomes when we're adding acupuncture as a treatment. So clinically as experts see that it's working, right? So yes. I think that's important too. I, th- I think that's really important. And the other thing I would love to add is that, you know, you want to find an acupuncturist that actually does truly see regularly patients that are going to a fertility clinic and understands everything that is going on at the fertility clinic. So for example, all my colleagues that... um are part of the ABOR, American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. We know in depth what's going on um, on a microscopic level and as a reproductive endocrinology level. We learn all of that while we also look at the traditional Chinese medicine perspective. Now, like, so for example, when a person comes in, in with a uterine lining that is thin and they're being monitored, and it's like, you know what, we need some extra days, right? So it's like, okay, this is where we go high or go home. And then we'll do a specific treatment for acupuncture. What may happen is that they can cancel a uh, embryo transfer cycle. And that is like horrible for a person going through this because you have like, spent your time um, anticipating anticipating this period, you may even take off work. So you really want it to work and you don't want it to be threatened by saying, oh gosh, like your lining isn't um, thick enough and we may have to cancel the cycle. So when people come in, then we say, gosh, like, okay, so let's see if we can thicken it. And so cool that we actually see a difference. So much so that multiple times, Dr. Russell will say, what did you do? Like, what's the difference? Like, how come it's been thin, thin, thin? And then all of a sudden you're doing, now it's like you come back and it's thick at the right level. And really the only change that they have made in that short juncture of time was like adding in more acupuncture. So it's very cool to witness this. Yeah, I remember you were mentioning that you had an example of a patient in a conversation we either had live on a podcast or just sharing back and forth where, I think there was a thickness issue. The lining wasn't thick enough. And so you actually said, okay, this isn't working. Let's, you know, either cancel it um, and then work on it the next time. Because the other piece is if it's not, you're not catching it, you don't want to waste you know, doing a transfer and the doctor to get missed out. Um, sorry, missing out. You don't want the doctor to miss out. Um, and if, as as a TCM practitioner, you have good communication with your uh, REs. And so I, I don't remember the story, but like the exact story, but I just remember you, like the patient was so appreciative. It was either you 
were able to improve things and you delayed it or you, you canceled it. But either way, understanding the procedure is really important because at the end of the day, you want a good transfer. You don't want to yes. transfer an embryo, your own embryo or, you know, your last embryo. And like, there's so much weighing in on that embryo transfer. You want it to be as perfect as possible. So to have that communication, I don't know if you remember what well, I'm talking about. Well, you know, here's the, so thing. Many- the, the truth is that <laughs> we do this every single day and this happens yes. all the time. So you're hundred percent right. Sometimes we work with them. I said, listen, I'm not tied to the fact that, you know, there might be a cancellation in the cycle. But if you, your doctor is actually saying, let's wait and see, then let's go full hog and do this. And sometimes it totally works. And other times I'm like, you know what? I think we need to um, back it off. And I think you actually need a physical break. So this is a slightly different conversation. So what I've seen is like sometimes people will have like maybe like a couple of rounds of failed cycles meaning they've done transfers and they've failed and then they're trying to use the same protocol. And what I have witnessed is that sometimes, and it depends on the person, it's like, you know, if you take a Tylenol every day and then you try to take the Tylenol the next time you have a headache and it doesn't work and and it's like, it's because your body's become too accustomed to it and it needs more. And that's what I have witnessed even when it comes to the embryo transfer. Sometimes the same protocol is just not enough. And the best thing to do in those scenarios is actually, you know what? We need to take a pause. Give your body a full break. Maybe like detox a bit, do more acupuncture to help your body rebalance. Never mind just trying to force the line to be thicker. Does that make sense? So yes. we do do both directions. Like mm-hmm. so, it's really individualized what's happening at the time. Because some people have no problems, and every cycle, if they've done multiple rounds and they're still responding, they're just good responders. And other people, it's the opposite. So depending on the scenario, depending on the sensitivity of a patient then we either continue or resume or or we cancel and then we just kind of gear up for the next cycle. Now, I want to also touch upon, well, more than touch upon because people, when they look up acupuncture for IVF, the biggest one that the, 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 the most famous thing that they hear about is let's do acupuncture before and after the embryo transfer. So you have a frozen embryo transfer cycle And then you hear about research, multiple research that talks about doing acupuncture 20 minutes before the embryo transfer and then 20 minutes after the embryo transfer. So kind of like what Dr. Huberman says is that we do see positive outcomes, right? But now what you need to understand is the timing. Is it absolutely crucial to do 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after? And um, why I say it's not. And the reason being is that, again, this is based on research. Research has to be very practical and they are doing it like... Non-practical. It has to be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excuse yeah. Me. Yes. It's no practical for the research. Report. Right. Practical for the, for the research. Right. And reproducible. Yes. yes. And but like... Not practical so, for the no. human being that's Correct. going through this. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, most... <laughs> I think... I don't know if it's 100%, but now a, most clinics want you to have a full bladder before you do your embryo transfer. There was a time like 20 years ago where there would be a doctor here and there that says, oh, you don't need a full bladder. But full bladder is very helpful for the reproductive doctor because it helps to move the the uterus in Mm -hmm. a specific alignment so it's easier to put in the catheter for the actual transfer. It's not convenient for you. It's good for the doctor. (laughs) <laughs> but that said, so imagine you're trying to relax with acupuncture needles in while you're having a full bladder, not so relaxing. So for us at our clinic at Alive, and you can DM us at Alive Holistic Health and, you know, just to find out more about this. But what we prefer is to actually do it the day before, because here's why. What is the purpose of pre embryo transfer acupuncture? Well, it's all about increasing the blood flow. And when we increase that blood flow, it makes it stickier and tackier. So it's more, um, when the, the embryo gets put in, it's easier to just like sit there easily. Does that make sense? And, um, I always equate it to this jam sandwich. 
So if the uterus is like the bread and the lining is like the jam, when you insert it, it should actually kind of stick, but we'll help it get stickier through the acupuncture before. And you don't need to do it exactly 20 minutes before the embryo transfer because it's longer lasting than that. We say it actually lasts for a good 48 hours. Now, so that's before. Post-embryo transfer, we do like to do that ideally on the very same day because guess what? If you've never done a transfer before, what I say is it's not the most sexy scenario. You go in and there's your physician, there's a nurse, there is the ultrasound technician, and there may be the embryologist. And like, there's just so many people. So you, you're probably not so relaxed unless you take Ativan. So that's an option, by the way. So some people take an Ativan to totally, totally chill them out. And, um, but if you're not, and even if you are, doing the acupuncture really prevents your uterus from contracting or staying contracted after the embryo transfer. Now, to add a little aside and a uh, tip, don't worry about after the embryo transfer if you have to pee. And in fact, there's some new research that says it's actually better to go pee because if you don't pee, what are you doing? You're holding it in and you're contracting. So there's better clinical evidence to say that um, and they were comparing women that stayed for 10 to 20 minutes and just relaxed before they went to the bathroom and those that actually went straight to the bathroom after. And they found higher pregnancy rates for those that went straight to the bathroom after. So you can totally walk to your acupuncturist. It doesn't have to be directly on site. That said, it's also not great if you have to travel like a real far distance to see your acupuncturist for a post-embryo transfer treatment. If that's the case, that might induce stress. So if you, um, if you were going to be in that predicament, then I would say just go home, right? But if you're like our clinic is right by four different um, well-known clinics in downtown Toronto. So people come to us, they walk, they, they, drive, however, right after an embryo transfer. And of course, there is a possibility of going into the fertility clinic to do the pre and post embryo transfers, but not all of them are uh, letting practitioners do that. So I hope that was helpful. And um, with regards to male factor, you already talked about that. So basically, you know, we're talking about acupuncture helping from the egg quality, uterine lining, pre and post embryo transfer, as well as male factor. So helping all four directions. Yeah, I would I would just bring it back to Dr. Dur what Dr. Huberman says. And I loved his summary. It's like it comes down to acupuncture working because of the impact on the uh, chemistry, so the hormones, and then the mechanical impact. And so recognizing it's an excellent adjunctive treatment to an already amazing uh, medical treatment, IVF in vitro fertilization, gave uh, both Mary and I the ability to have our miracle babies. If you found this episode helpful and you want to reach out to us, please contact us through um, Alive Holistic Health and actually just DM us on our Instagram page which is at Alive Holistic Health.